Let's learn about the law of armed conflict, LOAC, also called the law of war, by discussing the main purpose of the LOAC, applications, classes of combatants, the most known international treaties, some interesting ideas, and finish off with practical guidance for soldiers. As an active duty special forces officer sent to get a master's degree at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government, I remember being a bit out of my comfort zone while taking a national security law course. Although I got an A in the class, reading and understanding, quote, legal ease was not my forte. I quickly decided that implementing national security policy was a much better fit for me than writing it. The best reference for this video is FM 6-27, The Law of Land Warfare. Let's start with purpose. The main purposes of the LOAC are protecting combatants, non-combatants, and civilians from unnecessary suffering. Providing certain fundamental protections for persons who fall into the hands of the enemy, particularly prisoners of war, military wounded and sick, and civilians. Facilitating the restoration of peace. Assisting the commander in ensuring the disciplined, ethical, and effective use of military force. Preserving the professionalism and humanity of combatants. In preventing the degeneration of warfare into savagery or brutality. The first application of the LOAC is military necessity. This justifies the use of all measures required to defeat the enemy as quickly and as effectively as possible that are not prohibited by the law of armed conflict. You can target anything that is of military necessity, but you can't target civilians or hospitals. Humanity, the basis of protection for civilians. It forbids inflicting suffering injury, damage, or destruction unnecessary to accomplish a legitimate military purpose. Honor, also called chivalry, demands a certain amount of fairness and a certain mutual respect between opposing forces. This is why we provide medical care to enemy prisoners of war and not just to our own forces. Distinction, sometimes called discrimination, is used to distinguish between combatants and military objectives on the one hand and civilians and civilian objects on the other. Proportionality requires commanders to refrain from attacks in which the expected loss or injury to civilians and damage to civilian objects outweigh the expected military advantage. It also underlies the requirement to take feasible precautions to reduce collateral damage. Collateral damage is fluid, not constant, and is based upon popular support, military necessity, and political guidance. I remember having surgical special forces missions in Afghanistan canceled because we thought there might be the bad guy's family on the objective. Yet, a sister unit would level an entire building in Iraq while chasing their high-value target. Combatants in war are broken into several classes or groups. The first group is civilians. These are innocent bystanders who are not actively involved in the hostilities. Lawful combatants, these are uniformed soldiers. Spies, saboteurs, and other persons engaging in secretive and hostile acts. This is James Bond or members of the CIA private persons who engage in acts of hostility. These types of people lose the privilege of being considered civilians. Military attaches and diplomatic representatives of neutral states. Think of this group as members of a neutral government during a peace talk or making an inspection of a military hospital or a detention facility. Certain humanitarian personnel. Think of this group as military, medical, and religious personnel. Certain civilian supporters of the armed forces. These are civilian translators and contractors who directly support the armed forces. And unprivileged belligerents. These are civilians who participate in hostilities insomuch that they lose the privilege of being considered civilians. There are several international treaties which comprise the canon of international laws of war. 
but the most famous ones are the Washington Convention regarding the rights of neutrals at sea, 1854, the Hague Convention No. 4, respecting the laws and customs of war on land, 1907, the Geneva Convention relative to the treatment of prisoners of war, 1929, the Convention on the Prohibition of Development, Production, and Stockpiling of Bacteriological, Biological, and Toxin Weapons and on Their Destruction, 1972, the Ottawa Convention on the Prohibition of the Use, Stockpile, Production, and Transfer of Anti-Personnel Mines and Their Destruction, 1997. Other interesting ideas with the law of armed conflict include the fact that prisoners of war or POWs are to be treated humanely. Protection and care must be given to the wounded and sick, regardless of whether they are good guys or bad guys. Uniforms. Combatants have an obligation to distinguish themselves when they conduct attacks. For example, a militia or volunteer corps must wear fixed and distinctive insignia, recognizable at a distance, when they are conducting an attack. The use of human shields to intentionally shield military objectives should not be understood to prohibit an attack under the LOAC. LOAC violations that are punishable and merit a characterization as a war crime include using poisonous weapons or weapons calculated to cause unnecessary suffering, attack or bombardment of undefended cities, towns, or villages, pillaging of public or private property, maltreatment of dead bodies, poisoning wells or streams, resorting to perfidy, for example, using a white flag to conduct an attack treacherously, abusing or intentionally firing on a flag of truce, and or intentionally targeting protected areas, objects, or protected persons. Let's move on to practical guidance for soldiers starting with the obvious. Only fight enemy combatants. Do not harm enemies who surrender. Disarm the enemy and turn them over to your superiors. Do not kill or torture enemy prisoners of war or other detainees. Collect and care for the wounded, whether friend or foe. Do not attack medical personnel, facilities, or equipment. Destroy no more than the mission requires. Treat all civilians humanely. Do not steal. Respect private property and possessions. Do your best to prevent violations of the law of war. And report all violations of the law of war to your superiors. When I worked in Latin America, I was worried that if captured, the cartels would torture and kill me. When I worked in the Middle East, I was worried that the enemy would cut off my head with a rusty knife and film it for the internet. It seems a bit ironic to make rules for war when fighting enemy forces who don't know how to read and who, for sure, don't know or follow the laws of armed conflict. Nonetheless, the LOAC serves as guidelines for civilized nations to use to minimize unnecessary suffering and to prevent war from degenerating into savagery or brutality. War is terrible and mostly stupid, but until all wars stop, May we fight and play by the rules. Thanks for training with me today. I hope you learned something new and are more knowledgeable about the laws which govern armed conflict. Please like and subscribe if you want to join my special operations team. And don't forget to forward this video to a friend who needs to see this. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?